What comes to mind when you hear the place Transylvania? Count Dracula, right? Most people's first association with Transylvania is Dracula, the most famous vampire and a symbol of evil, horror, and fear. But the next time you hear about Transylvania, I want you to think of someone very different. This is Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. Dr. Csikszentmihalyi, or Mike as his colleagues call him, was a renowned Hungarian-American psychologist and a leading researcher on happiness and creativity. Mike's last name, Csikszentmihalyi, is not only difficult to pronounce, but it's a family name derived from a village called Csikszentmihalyi in Transylvania, which is a historical region, region in modern Romania. This is the same region where the fictional vampire Count Dracula supposedly lived. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi's family was actually Hungarian, not Romanian, and he emigrated to the United States from Italy at age 22 after living through the social and political turmoil of the Second World War. In the United States, Csikszentmihalyi studied psychology at the University of Chicago and went on to become a renowned researcher and author. If Dracula is known for evil, Mike Csikszentmihalyi is known for the opposite. He spent most of his life studying and writing about happiness, creativity, meaning, and many of the positive things in our lives. His most famous contribution to psychology was recognizing and naming a concept called flow, which describes a mental state of total absorption in the task at hand. It's very likely you've experienced flow before. Have you ever been so completely involved in an activity that you lost track of time? Athletes and musicians experience this regularly. Sometimes they call it being in the zone. And it often happens when you're so focused or concentrated on what you're doing that you become totally present. For a while, nothing else matters and you feel almost like you're outside of reality. This is the flow state. Does flow sound familiar? Mihai Csikszentmihalyi discovered flow in the 1970s when he got fascinated by artists who would get lost in their work. He interviewed many painters who got so immersed in painting that they would go for hours or even days without eating, drinking, or sleeping. The fact that these were artists is important because they were creating art for its own sake, just for the pleasure of doing it. It didn't matter if they made money or became famous for their paintings. They were painting because they loved painting. Csikszentmihalyi described flow as being completely involved in an activity for its own sake, the ego falls away, time flies, every action, movement, and thought follows inevitably from the previous one, like playing jazz. Your whole being is involved, and you're using your skills to the utmost. Research about flow picked up in the 1980s and 1990s, and today it's a well-studied experience that we all have at some point or another. As a career designer, it's helpful to understand flow because it's a mental state that can make work much more enjoyable and meaningful. Even if you don't experience full flow states or total engagement, identifying the types of activities that get you close to a flow state will help you feel more engaged at work and more energized by your career as a whole. So what induces a flow state? Why do people have this experience and what makes it happen? Mihai Csikszentmihalyi and others studying flow realize that it typically occurs when the activity we're doing presents a high level of challenge and we have a high level of skill to match that challenge. The simplest way to understand it is by looking at this graph. On the vertical axis, we have challenge level, and on the horizontal axis, skill level. Flow occurs when both challenges and skills are high. This makes sense because flow is complete absorption or total engagement in the task at hand. And it turns out that our minds can only focus on about 110 bits of information at a time. That might sound like a lot of information, but simple tasks like decoding speech use about 50 bits of information per second. So just listening to this video, you're using about half of your total concentration at this moment. When we're in flow, the challenge and our skill level are both high. And so all of our attention is going to the activity at hand. We stop thinking about our other worries and what we're doing later or anything, except what's happening right here, right now. Two other conditions that promote flow are clear goals and immediate feedback. So to summarize, we're most present and engaged in what we're doing if we know what the goal is, we can tell if we're making progress, and there's a good balance between the challenge and our ability. For me, flow happens most often when I'm doing a challenging rock climb, because my only goal 
is to get to the top of the wall, and I'm constantly monitoring my progress and how well I'm climbing. And I have a lot of experience, so my ability nicely matches the challenge level. For you, flow might happen when you're solving a hard math problem, or driving a motorcycle, or writing, or coding, or knitting, or playing the violin. Flow as a mental state is nearly universal, but when we each experience it depends on our skills and the activities or contexts we feel motivated and interested in. So why might you want to pursue a career that allows you to experience more flow at work? The answer is actually quite simple. Spending more time in flow makes us happier and more successful. Flow is such a positive experience that it tends to increase our happiness and life satisfaction in the long run, even after we stop doing the activity that produces flow. So if I go rock climbing on the weekend, when it comes to Wednesday and I'm on the computer all day writing and grading and coaching, I am happier and more satisfied with my life than I would have been if I hadn't gone climbing and hadn't had that flow experience earlier in the week. Another reason people love flow is because as humans, our happiness is derived partially from personal growth, and flow situations tend to promote learning and developing new skills. So over the long run, flow increases our positive emotions directly, just because the experience is enjoyable, but it also increases our life satisfaction indirectly, because we're being challenged and using our skills to learn and grow. So the question becomes, what work activities, past or present, get you closest to this mental state of total engagement? You might not experience the full ecstasy and loss of ego that characterizes flow, but I bet there are some types of work that get you closer to a flow state than others. As you learn to identify when you're engaged at work, it also helps to know what a flow state isn't. So let's return to Csikszentmihalyi's graph. Remember, flow is a mental state that occurs when an activity's challenge level and our skill level are both high. But what about when challenges and skills are both low? Usually in that case, we feel apathetic. We just don't care. And if we have low skills but high challenges, we feel worried or anxious. And if we aren't being challenged but we have lots of skills, we feel bored or relaxed. And then close to the flow state are these states called arousal and control. Arousal means the challenge is higher than our skill level. And in the right doses, this can, this can be a really productive mental state of learning because we have to be alert and ready to respond and think quickly. Control can feel very similar to, throw, to flow. It's when we know we're capable of meeting the challenge, but it's still requiring the use of our skills. If we regularly experience flow at work, we're likely to be happier, to feel better, and to be more satisfied with our life as a whole. We'll also be likely to accomplish more and be more productive because high levels of challenge and skill are motivating and rewarding. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi wrote extensively about work, and not just as it relates to flow. He was very passionate about helping people find meaning in work and have a fulfilling and professional life. Mike often said that good work is work in which you enjoy doing your best, while at the same time contributing to something beyond yourself. Apply this lens of flow to figure out what work energizes you and what work you enjoy doing the most. Ask yourself, have I ever experienced flow at work? What work goes by quickly for me? What work do I enjoy doing for its own sake? What work activities leave me more energized rather than drained? What challenging tasks do I do at work that are a good match for my skills? As you build your awareness of work you find engaging, you can use this knowledge to guide which projects, positions, and careers you seek out in the future.